A common question I get about water heaters is when do they need to be replaced? When does a person know that it's time to replace a water heater? The mainstream idea about this is that the average lifetime of a water heater is eight to 10 years and every consecutive year after that, your chances of the water heater springing a leak and flooding your house go up year after year. I believe that is not even close to being true. Without exaggerating, I, I had to have worked on at least a couple hundred of water heaters and I've worked with guys that worked on probably thousands of them and most of us have never even seen a water heater that flooded a basement. It's super rare. In fact, you know, if a water heater springs a leak and floods your house, you should consider yourself chosen. It's almost like destiny. This was destined to happen to you. Very uncommon. And every time that I hear that an average life of a water heater is eight to 10 years, I kind of just smile to myself because I've worked on a lot of them and I've seen plenty of them go over 30, 40, and even 50 years old. There's some super old water heaters out there. When people state that the average life is eight years, no, it's not. They last a lot longer. Maybe the brand new stuff, I mean, who knows how long they will last, but I would believe it. I'm sure the new stuff is not as good as the old water heaters. But even them, I would say probably at least 15 or 20 years. But let's go over some of the reasons why people end up replacing their water heaters. Let's start with a simple one. The water, the hot water, all of a sudden became stinky. You turn on your water and it smells. Most of the time, replacing the anode rod is all it takes to remove that smell. I have a video on how to replace an anode rod if you wanna see what a job like that entails. The next one is popping noise. Whenever your water heater turns on to heat the water, you hear popping and snapping and crackling. Most of the time that's caused by scale buildup or sediment buildup. An example for this would be, have you ever had an old tea kettle that would have some scale buildup on the inside of it and every time you heated up some water, it would be crackling and snapping? That tea kettle will probably last a very, very, very long time with that buildup and it'll still heat the water. Same with the water heater. When I was growing up at my parents' house, the water heater was crackling and snapping like that all the time. Everybody just got used to it. If you hear that noise, that means the water heater is working. But if that noise is really bothering you, there are ways to drain and clean the water heater to stop it from making all those noise and get that sediment and the buildup out of there. Another reason is that the water heater comes on with a bang. Usually this is the gas water heaters and most of the time this is caused by delayed ignition. So if for some reason the gas is not being lit right away, it gives the water heater some more time. That chamber gets filled up with more gas and when it does actually light, it's almost like a little mini explosion that goes off. So an easy solution for that is to simply take the burner out and clean it up. I don't have a specific video for that, but in my video on how a gas water heater works, I do show you a video on how to take the burner assembly out and clean it. So if you're interested, check that video out. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put my whole water heater playlist in the video description. If you wanna see any of these videos that I'm talking about, just check out that playlist. One more reason is that the water heater is running out of hot water faster than it used to. In these cases, sometimes it's not even the water heater's fault. Sometimes it can be a bad mixing valve in the shower that is actually leaking cold water by and diluting your hot water. And that's the only problem. If you have something like that going on at your house, I do have a video in which I explain how you can tell if it's the water heater that's the problem or there's something else going on. Also, if you have an electric water heater, those often will have two heating elements and sometimes one of the heating elements will burn out and the water is only being heated by the one element. And of course, you don't have as much hot water as you used to. Checking those elements is pretty simple. All you need is a multimeter, and I do have a video on how to do that if you're interested. And the last reason I'm gonna to touch on is the water heater is leaking. Just because there's water around your water heater doesn't necessarily mean that you have to replace it. For example, once in a while, I'll get a service call where the customer says, oh no, my water heater is leaking. I think I need to get it replaced. You need to come out here immediately. So I get out there, I check the water heater and nothing's wrong with it. It's not leaking from anywhere. So I start looking around and it turns out that the whole house humidifier that's on the furnace, that's the thing that is leaking. Or sometimes the air conditioner will be leaking water and it'll go around the water heater and people will think that it's actually the water heater that is bad. Other times I found the drain valve to be leaking or the pressure relief valve would be leaking some water by or even some pipes, the fittings on the pipes on top of the water heater were leaking, but the water heater itself is good. So if you see water around a water heater, that does not necessarily mean that it needs to be replaced. The only time it needs to be replaced is if the inner tank on the water heater is the one that is leaking. 
then unfortunately there's nothing you can do and the whole water heater needs to be replaced. And before we end this video, I do want to touch on people's fear. Like this is probably the biggest reason why people replace a 10 year old water heater. And the biggest reason is that somebody told them, hey, I've heard that somebody's water heater bottomed out and water just came gushing everywhere. So let, let me explain this whole bottoming out concept. What this means is literally the bottom of the water heater all the way around, it rusts out and that whole bottom falls out. All 50 gallons or 40 gallons or however big your water heater is, all of that comes blasting out. Plus you got 60 PSI water pressure going into the water heater. So not only is it dumping 50 gallons, there's a bunch of water that still keeps coming into the water heater and flowing out. Something like that is possible and it has happened before, but personally I've never seen it and most of the techs that I worked with have never seen it either. Usually what will happen is the water heater will spring a leak and just like a corner of it, just one side will start to leak water by and there's going to be a puddle around your water heater. In most cases when this happens, it's simply because the water heater has been neglected. So the owner saw that there was water around the water heater, but they just neglected it, they let it go. So it was leaking like that for maybe a year or two or even three. And then finally it bottoms out and water goes all over the place. So if your water heater is not leaking, the chances of it flooding your house randomly when you're on vacation are extremely, extremely slim. In fact, if any of you watching this have had experience or know somebody whose water heater flooded their house, I would love to hear that story, how it happened and why it happened. And one last thing that I forgot to cover is the efficiency. This applies more for the gas water heaters, not the electric. Because with the gas water heaters, you have the burner on the bottom. So it heats up the tank from the bottom. And the thing is, the older the water heater is, and it depends on the quality of your water, if you have a lot of sediment, and let's say there's three or four inches of sediment buildup on the bottom of your water heater tank, whenever your burner comes on, it has to heat through all of that sediment first before it starts to heat up that water. And when that happens, you're using more gas to heat the water and your bill will go up a little bit. But that's it, it just goes up a little bit. The increase is not really dramatic. That little efficiency that you're losing is not worth replacing the water heater or trying to clean it all up and stuff. For most people, the best option is to simply not touch it. And I talk more about that in my other video where I talk about should a water heater be drained or not. So if you want more on that, check that video out. Anyway, that is all I had. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any comments, I would love to see you in the comment section below. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I have some advice for moms and dads today. So ladies, whenever you get on a weight scale, just remember that a woman with a golden heart, nerves of steel, and an iron character is never light. And dads, if your kids decide to pursue a history degree, advise them against it. A history degree is useless. There's no future in it.